It's getting closer to the IBC 2019, and you know what that means? Fresh camera releases, and today we are taking a quick look at Canon's new beast, the C500 Mark II. This new camera features a 38.1 by 20.1 mm 5.9K CMOS sensor with a resolution of 5952 by 3140, and it's claimed to capture 15 stops of latitude. This is very similarly spec to the Canon's C700 full frame. It features a new Digic DV7 processor, which will allow you to record Cinema Raw Light at 5.9K internally, as well as Canon XF AVC at 4K 42.10 bit. In 4K mode, you can oversample the full 5.9K sensor, which will improve noise, graininess, and reduce moiré. In regards to media, you have two CF Express ports as your primary recording media, and an SD card slot for HD proxies. CF Express is an interesting choice, as not many manufacturers are producing this media currently. Sony are making some incredibly fast cards, but they're not available yet. But this could become a new standard, as it has the potential to be extremely fast, as it is based on PCIe 3.0 and NVMe instead of the dated SATA 3 used in CFast 2.0. With the two slots, you can also do relay or simultaneous recording. There will be a huge range of recording options in both Cinema Raw Light and XFAVC. You will have the ability to record up to 60 frames a second in full 6K mode, and then up to 120 frames a second in a 2K crop mode. This is an awesome set of frame rates, but I do wish that Canon had not restricted the slow motion quite as much as they have, but the fact you can shoot in the full frame modes in both 5.9K and 4K at up to 60p is awesome. You can also shoot in XF ABC 4K in 42 10 bit. I'm so happy that Canon actually <laughs> included this option as it was something that people were really screaming out for the C200 when it first released. In regards to data rates, you can go up to 2.1 gigabits per second in CRM or 810 megabits per second in XF ABC. Pair this with either C-Log2 or C-Log3. I'm sure this footage will handle coloring really well. You can also load in your own user-generated LUTs and use the LUT button on the side of the camera to toggle these on and off. Canon haven't confirmed the base ISO of the sensor, but considering the spec is pretty similar to the C700 full frame, it could be the same, which would be 800 in C-Log2 or 3. The body itself looks more akin to the C200 than the rest of Canon's previous C-series cameras. It's shorter and more angular with the familiar Canon layout for easy operation. It will have a weight of 1,750 grams, which is only a little bit heavier than the C200 and C300, which both weigh in around 1,400 grams. This means that it should be easily balanced on most modern gimbals or stabilizers. Canon has also introduced an interchangeable lens mount system. This is awesome that they have finally done a proper IMS system on one of their cameras, and you'll have several mounts to choose from, such as EF mount, CineLock EF mount, PL with Cook iData support and B4. I do wish, however, that they had made the base mount an RF and then range of adapters to go on top of that. This would have made it way more versatile without the need to change the mount out completely like this. One other thing of note is the change to the power and media dial. You don't have a fourth position anymore for playback, but you now have a button to switch between camera mode and playback mode. I think I prefer having the separate dial position as it was not easy to knock by accident, whereas this button might be. Canon has also introduced a new extension unit system with the C500 Mark II. The current units that they have announced are an OLED EVF, the Unit 1, which has a Genlock sync out port, a remote B RS422 port, and Ethernet, and then the Unit 2, which adds the same ports as the Unit 1, but with a V-mount battery plate, a 3-pin fissure, a 24-volt RS, a lens terminal, and another two XLR ports for quad-channel audio recording. These will use a back mounting system and can completely change the form factor of the camera. This is one huge plus of this design as it will make the camera very easy to strip down for gimbal use and then rig up for shoulder or studio configurations. The fact you can easily remove the EVF will make it so much easier to balance on gimbals without having to worry about restricting or hitting your tilt axis. The EVF module is not the only EVF that works with the C500 Mark II. You can also use the EVF V50 or V70. There is also a slightly changed I.O., which now has a 12G SDI and a new HDMI that can output 4K up to 60p. You also have built-in ND system that can cycle through 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 stops of ND, which will be really handy when shooting in bright conditions. It of course features Canon's amazing dual pixel autofocus system that is included in the C200 and some other Canon cameras. Canon has also updated the LCD monitor to the new 4.3 inch LM-V2, which is supposed to improve the touchscreen performance. However, this may be too big for some people, and the solution to that would be to use the Canon C200 LCD with it. 
There is also now two different OSD layouts, one designed for the information to sit on, the peripherals of the screen so you see more of the image, and one that sits on the image but is clearer to view. It also uses the same BPA series of batteries that the Canon C300 Mark II and C200 use. These will be ideal for run and gun scenarios. The C500 Mark II is also the first Cinema EOS camera to have built-in image stabilization into the body. This gives you five axis camera shake correction even without an IS lens attached. This is a massive feature to have and will make so many documentary and broadcast shooters happy. Canon has also added anamorphic support. We haven't been given much information about this, but you'll be able to use a 1.3 times lens with the full frame sensor or a two times lens in a six x five crop mode of the sensor. I'm interested to see how much of the sensor this mode uses as the sensor has a 20 mil height, which is greater than the traditional Academy anamorphic four perth standard of 18.6 millimeters. I'm intrigued to learn more about this mode as it could become a great option for shooters wanting to shoot 4K anamorphic for Netflix. Netflix requires a minimum of 8,294,400 photo sites, which is the equivalent of UHD, to be in use. As they require a 2 to 1 delivery aspect ratio, this would equate to 2880 by 2880 active photo sites for anamorphic, which the C400 should be able to achieve. That was our roundup of the Canon C500 Mark II. I can't wait for IBC to get my hands on the camera as this thing looks like a little beast. The body will be retailing at with the cameras shipping in December. If you want to pre-order with us, you can find links in the description or if you want a more tailored service so we can help build your ultimate rig, please drop an email to demo at cvp.com. Anyway, thanks for watching and if you haven't already, please hit like and make sure you're subscribed.